Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Good evening, this is Pastor Spencer from Messiah Lutheran Church in Salem, Oregon. Today is the 3rd of November, Anno Domini 2020. It is Tuesday evening, and tonight our psalm is... the 43rd Psalm. We begin in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Vindicate me, O God, and defend my cause against the ungodly people. From the deceitful and unjust men, deliver me. For you are the God in whom I take refuge. Why have you rejected me? Why do I go about mourning? because of the oppression of the enemy. Send out your light and your truth. Let them lead me. Let them bring me to your holy hill and to your dwelling. Then I will go to the altar of God, for God is exceeding joy. And I will praise you with lyre, O God, my God. Why are you cast down, O my soul? And why are you in turmoil within me? Hope in God, and I shall again praise Him, my salvation and my God. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. And our prayer for this evening. O Lord God of the afflicted and of all who are suffering wrongfully, have compassion upon those tempted by Satan and persecuted by the world. Comfort and strengthen both them and us by your word and spirit. Uphold us and finally deliver us from all evil and receive us into everla the everlasting kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. And tonight we continue our study of Romans chapter 14, verses 22 and 23. So whatever you believe about these things, now remember this is concerning food and whether one diet is right or another is right. Whatever you believe about these things, keep between yourself and God. Blessed the man who does not condemn himself by what he approves. But the man who has doubts is condemned if he eats because his eating is not from faith, and everything that does not come from faith is sin. So, Paul was facing this dietary laws and regulations that were being imposed on people, and it was from more than just the sacrifices to the idol, people saying that if meat was sacrificed to an idol, it wasn't suitable for eating, because it was meat that was tainted by belief in some idol. But Paul's thoughts were that if that's an idol, then it's not even real, and therefore, what's the problem? But he was also facing the problem with the Judaizers. Now, you might recall, he faced them in several other epistles. The Judaizers, those previous Jews that held on to the Jewish belief system, even while they were set free under Christianity. They believed that a man had to be circumcised, that they should keep the dietary laws, amongst many other things. And so... They condemned anybody that didn't eat like them or act like them. Just like these people that were basically very pious or pietistic, actually. Being pious is not a problem. But they were pietistic. They were saying their rules and regulations are what made them superior Christians. They walked better. They talked better. They ate better. They lived better. Now, does that mean that we can be foolish in the way that we eat and how we treat our bodies? No, we are still a temple of the Holy Spirit. But our food, our diet, does not become a bragging point. It is not a spiritual thing as much as it is adiaphora or a medical thing. If you eat wrong, eventually it will catch up with you. So, Paul is saying if your, if your dietary rules and regulations are based upon some morality that's not found in the Word of God, then it's not of faith. And so, the Word of God's pretty clear. It was Peter who had the vision that said all things are now clean. Now, 
because all things are now clean doesn't mean that all things are profitable for our benefit and for our good. If you eat too much of any one thing, it's probably not good for you. Uh, there are certain things that if you eat any of it, that's probably not pretty good for you either, but it's not forbidden. And so, this is to say, do not use your personal perspective as a spiritual point, because it is not. And people do it all the time, you know that. People will have opinions that they treat as law. And they want to condemn everybody based upon that law. And so, Paul is saying no. Unity in the church is more important. But when there are laws to be followed, like in Romans 13, being obedient to government officials, then we do that. And we do it willfully because... If there's peace and if there's unity, then the Word of God goes out. And that's especially true even in the household of God. We want to live in peace. And therefore, if something's not clearly sought out in Scripture, and we just got through with Reformation, Reformation was very clear that much had been added to the church that really wasn't in the Word of God. And it needed to be stripped away so that the pure Word of God could go out. Well, that's all that Paul is saying here. Go back to the Word of God. What does the Word of God say? And when we read the Word of God, we use one of those solas, sola scriptura, to properly understand what each passage is. So if we don't understand it, we don't use our own intellect and say, gosh, I can reason that out this way. No, we find other passages that deal with that same part. And so we see here that Peter says, all, all things are now clean. Therefore, anything we eat is all right. It's considered clean. It's not offense to God. There is no longer any dietary rules or regulations in Scripture. As of the New Testament, those are done away with the Old Testament. And so now we are free to eat whatever. But again, is it beneficial to us? Too much sugar might take a diabetic and put them into insulin shock. Too much fat might clog your arteries. Too much of anything might taste good, but the end result may not be pleasant thereof. And so we try to exercise freedom with, within the bounds of responsibility. And that's really what it's all about. We don't condemn other people. We might condemn ourselves if we eat wrongly. And we might point out to other people that maybe a whole chocolate cake's just a little much to have. But let us do it in love. Not in haughtiness, not in arrogance, but in love. And that's all for tonight. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make His face shine upon you, be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift His countenance upon you and give you His peace. The peace of the Lord be with you. Good night and God bless.